just to say hello. Yeah, hello there and hello here. <laughs> this is the second day of the watercolour portrait chair summer school week. And thanks very much everybody for returning. It's always good to come back if they do. And and for Pete, who's our lovely model today. Yeah. Thanks very much, Pete. Okay. So whatever position you occupy now will be the same pose really for the day. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. So just find your position and we'll um, do our best. And if you can't see when I'm when I'm painting, you can move around or whatever, you know, feel free to move around. Okay. I forgot about this part. It's no harm to forget about them until it's, until it's on you, the painting part of things. <clears throat> Let's see now. So again, I'm kind of wanting to organise my table so that everything that I need is within easy reach. Like my water being over there would be a pain in the arse now. So I'm going to bring that closer. Um, and I don't actually need my chip of paint beside me on the table. I'm going to put them down there. Um, I think I have enough of everything, really. <coughs> We do flower painting in mixed media in this room, and yeah, yeah. we take ages to clean up after this. Well, you can see sometimes yeah. it still stays there, but they've got very good here. They seem to want it to be used for creative pursuits, so they're, they're very, they're very good with things like that. Okay, and then find your position so that you feel comfortable. Like I feel like I want to lift it up a little bit as I look at Pete and back to my easel. Um, it seems to me like, you know, that feels like an easier transition. And already I'm kind of beginning to look at the, the little triangle where his nose stops and the eyebrow starts on the other side of his face and then the edge of the face. I'll show you when I'm painting it, but it's helpful for me to just kind of find little ways in. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And we've got the, the deep blue sea behind him today. I just thought I'd... Mm -hmm. uh, quickly ran back into the house and grabbed that off the bookshelf because I thought it would be nice to have some yeah, sort of background. So, here we go. And of course, to keep yourself hydrated and loose of limb, as I say. <coughs> okay. And one of the things that I find useful is um, when you go to steady yourself to focus, Kind of on the out breath it seems to be a steadying kind of influence and the in breath takes care of itself then i remember that from um, giving birth <laughs> used to say focus on the out breath breathe your baby out and you're kind of giving birth to something here too aren't you <laughs> uh -huh. okay so let's see now i do mm, no it's okay i'm just going to say i need more of this room but it's all right i think so here's the cadmium red, and then the sap green. And I think when I mix those two together, that I'll get a colour that I can use to begin with. Okay. Uh -huh. And I think I will start this time maybe with that little shape over there. It's like tremor in my, in my hands, just noticing. <laughs> There's a lovely, um, there's a lovely quote that I think Rodan, he said, the main thing, or is it Renmore, the main thing is to be moved, to love, to hope, to tremble, to live. Yeah. <laughs> I'm willing trembling with the brush. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the stuff of living. <laughs> All right. So here we are with the, the kind of shadows and the sockets of the eyes is what I'm seeking here. And the space, the shape of the space between. I'm just going to push and lift for that direction of the eyebrow and then kind of pull and lift for this direction. So I'm creating a socket within which the eye will sit later. But just for now, all I want to do is locate, um, best I can, the position of things. So I'm finding my way gradually down the face there. And I think as I go down the face a little bit lower, I feel like the alizarin crimson could come in. Uh, yeah, for the little bit of skin, what was I gonna do? Maybe, yeah, just that little bit of skin there that sits low in between the, the hair of the beard, you know. Is, um, Madeline, would you mind turning off that recipe? I don't know why, but I'm... Oh, hey, hey. I'm very uh, 
sensitive to noise when it's not my own voice. Mm. Maybe there's a better way. Okay. So, you know, a little in crimson. And I can't do any more there for now, so you know, I'm not sure what more I want to do there, really. Aside from possibly indicating the rough position of the, like, you know, you could scoop up the paint as well if you've got some, if you want to just have one little spot of it, you could scoop it up and, uh, and pl place it on. So that direction seemed important there. And then I don't, want, don't know what more to do there, so I'm going to move on. I've got warm on the brush though, so I'm going to indicate wherever there is warm. Uh, I'm going to kind of start to apply that elsewhere too, wherever I see there to be um, a bit of warm. <clears throat> and I feel like I'm going to need, yeah, so some of the viridian green maybe, you know. So, you know. I'm going to use that into the, was that you, Alison? Mm -hmm. Oh, Trish. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it into the alizarin there because I felt that afterwards, it's not as warm on the nose, the, warm is no, the nose is warmer and the lips are warmer than that area of the cheek. Mm -hmm. And so the swiftest way for me to cool that down and, and darken and de um, make it cooler is to stick some of the viridian green in. You know, so I'm just kind of laying the, the brush on parallel to the paper. I would really notice today um, how you, you, how you, um, where you place the brush down and where you lift it mm -hmm. and the kind of contact you make, it seems really kind of maybe finicky, but it's worth noticing the kind of contact that your brush makes with the paper because you can do different things with it when you pull and push up and oftentimes I find myself just using the brush to lay on the water really to allow the pigment to flow into that rather than doing any sort of painting with it it's more laying on and sometimes you can get a, a really pleasing um, effect when you do that I think so let's see now this looks to me like this needs to lift a little bit higher because that um, channel of light on the cheekbone is narrower so I think I could possibly bring the, the shadow here down a little bit more um, and the one here too holding the eye on this side and then there's the temple which has a tiny bit of shadow too and I think maybe a touch of yellow ochre above it so that there is yellow ochre and I think I could include that too here and I'm looking more at the shape of light. It's almost like jigsaw pieces fitting together. Um, and I like to push and lift, you know, in order that it paints itself again on the way back down sometimes. Um, and if you don't want it to paint itself again, you can always lift it again and just stop it by, by pushing it up. Um, like jigsaw pieces fitting together. So. The, the shape of the jigsaw of light that represents the nose is meeting the, the dark of the socket of the eye. And you're aware, because your brush is, is the thing that will identify those edges, that's why you need to be aware of where the brush is placed and lifted, because that's what's making your jigsaw piece clear. So it's kind of satisfying trying to find your jigsaw pieces from your angle, you know. Okay, so what next now, I wonder? I think maybe the line of the jaw could be established next. Let's see, yeah, and if there's a, a little bit of ultramarine blue, maybe could come in for the little um. There's a nice dark bit here, you know, um, that's a helpful identifying spot below the eye there, maybe about here. I'm also noticing a little bit where it sits in relation to other parts, like the skin here and the shadow of the cheekbone. But I'm not only relying on them, at this stage I still want to kind of be looking at the graph of the bigger things. So I'm not just seeing the things right beside it, I'm noticing where it sits in relation to the socket of the eye. Um, and that way you're always kind of in flux with things on a bigger scaffolding. There's like a bigger order underneath it all that you can flower your thing out over or something like that. I think you know what I mean when I say words like that, that doesn't sound really like good English, does it? But hopefully um, flesh it out is probably a better word than flower. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe not. Anyway, we've got the line of the jaw here as well. 
and then it'll sit back further where it bends. It bends a little bit, but it's below um, and back from the temple where it bends. And I think it needs a little bit of yellow ochre into that bend. And I'm aware too, when I have closed my eyes, that really all of this is going to be in shadow. So the parts that I'm more, um, more uh, concentrating on and kind of more uh, wanting to be clearer about are the bits that are catching the light here. Down here, it doesn't matter so much if there's a bit of a mess and things. So it's not, it doesn't feel so critical. You know, I don't have to keep any of the white areas clear down there. Okay, now, I think the next thing I could do there would be to explain the, something of the moustache. And as I see it out here, it feels like it's almost that colour. Um, I'm going to just try that colour first and see. And it's the moustache that extends further out than anything else. Uh, the moustache extends further out than any other part of Pete's face here. There might be a little touch of something like that here too. And maybe so I could print. So oh, this is mostly colors, yellow ochre. This what color. are the colours that you use for the moustache? For, for the moustache. It's mostly yellow ochre on the brush. So that one there. Yeah. And that's just the outside of the moustache. It just looks to me to be that kind of colour. Mm. Um, okay. Mm. I mean, there's a flash of it over here too. Let's see, there's something kind of warmish there, but it's clean yellow open. It's not, not needing to be adulterated as Damien says by any other colour. Damien Callan is a, um, an artist friend of mine and he does really great um, classes too. He's doing a landscape course, I think, next week mm. here at Port Seaton. Oh no, it's this week, sorry, it's over. Today's <laughs> 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 the last day. I know tomorrow's the last day, but don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, the chief is in the sing on wrong stuff. But he's very good if you, you know, Damien Callan. Anyway, he says, you know, um, about yellow, it's easily adulterated. I think that's very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and like um, here, I didn't want it to be mixed in with any other colour of the yellow for this side, because when I have closed my eyes, it feels like quite a nice. Uh, warmish light and I want there to be ways of identifying this as the light where the light is falling so colour being fresh will read more as being in the light. On you, you've got the nose to read really well, you just snuck that up on us without telling oh. us. Well, it kind it's of snuck up on itself there now, sometimes <laughs> it just works <laughs> out and you don't question the second thing. You don't want to question stuff if it works. Yeah. But do question it after then, it's okay, and I can pretend I knew what I was doing. Um, so I think there is something about it, all right, like the shape of this general shadow. And if you can kind of, there is something, honestly, about it sneaking up on yourself. Well, it was, it's the negative space, I guess, that yeah. has created the nose. Because that line of the nose has come through really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah, kind the of where the. Eye socket going around it. Yeah. Oh, sorry, here and here. Yeah. Yes, those are the important shapes to find. Mm -hmm. So if you can find something at the top of the nose, I would avoid drawing anything down from the top to the bottom of the nose, really. Mm -hmm. Especially the spherical end, you want to leave that be as fleshed out as possible. So uh, identifying the, the jigsaw shapes of the sockets, whatever they are from your point of view, will let you know the shape of the light mm -hmm. and it'll feel like the bridge of the nose is extending out from that. And then any sort of thing you can capture underneath the nose will say this is the bottom of the nose, especially if there's a mouth below it. Yeah. You know? And I think there is something too in the general shape of the shadow there. It's occupying like the shadow that's attached to the nose and cast by the nose is what that is really. And afterwards, and, and I know that the light is coming from here, so I feel like the, the cast shadow will, you know, to be helpful for it to look as though the shadow is being cast in that direction. So there's a little bit of what, you, what you're what you seeking, you're, you're exaggerating, I suppose, things that are helpful to explain form mm -hmm. and ignoring stuff that's not helpful. So mm -hmm. this is the discerning thing. So when you stand back and look at your work, you want to be able to see the significant things that let us know this is Pete. Mm -hmm. And apparently we can recognize people from 100 feet away, or 100 mm -hmm. foot, like 100 paces, you can recognize a person's face by these kind of darks and lights that make up the landscape mm. of our individual faces. Mm. So this is the thing you'd be looking for. And that's why I think standing back is helpful, half closing your eyes is helpful. Um, 
and it's a voyage of discovery from your viewpoint. It's exciting to be curious, okay, mm. what is it now here that will make this face read as this face today, you know? Mm. And what is it? And really do your best to pull that out for yourself. Okay, and then, yeah, so I think we're gonna carry on with um, down here, explaining the, the beard, like, Madeline, you're free to go whenever you want. I mean, you can stay and watch if you want to. <laughs> and join in. She's like, hey, you know, Madeline, you got an A in arts, didn't you? Yeah. In your, um, and that was it advanced higher even? Higher. You, did, you didn't do advanced higher. <laughs> yeah. But she's a fantastic artist herself. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so thanks a million. And we'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Come early if you want to stay. Bye. 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 Okay, I'm going to re-establish this rack that's here, just because I feel like there was maybe a little bit more space for something in between. I just wanted to find it more clearly where exactly it is. And it's not even that clear still, but there's something about leaving it ambiguous enough that you can later nail it when you know, you know. So I would avoid until, you're, until there is a clarity really committing to it. And I know that's, it's a funny thing, but you'll find that you'll know when you, you've got that sureness of your blow. You know, it's like in Dublin who was saying you're like Barry McGuigan, you know, going in for the punch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I didn't really like when he said it first, it was more going for dancer, you know. <laughs> but it already means like that thing of kind of working up to the mark and then just only, you know, when you know it's the one. Um, so that's ultramarine blue again now, and I think that might be, and I know we've got the blue behind, but for now I want to just find any colour that's going to let me explain the, the direction of the edge of the beard. So looking at the mouth, how far away from the mouth is it? Just something like this direction is what I'm wanting. Recognising that it's about level with the tip of the nose where the turn in the beard happens. And I think sometimes it's helpful not to have the edge here explained so much. Maybe there's a touch that could be, oh hang on now, we'll try something here. Just to kind of get the feeling of it going back in the distance, but this I think reads as light. Um, yeah, and then let's see. I could even just catch that trick and push it up a bit. It's not as though there's an awful lot of colour in this area, but I just wanted to put something there. Okay. Um, yeah. And I suppose there is a thing all right to leaving a part alone when, you, when it's not answering your question. Let it alone and go somewhere else. And you'll find that sometimes going somewhere else, the question is answered already, like by the next thing. <coughs> okay. And so there's a, the back of the head here sits almost parallel to the nose, I think. And there's a good distance between them. I'm noticing the, the position of that shadow in relation to the nose and the back of the head. Um, and of course we have an ear in there as well, which is a little bit lower than the shadow of this, the eyebrow. So I, I'm imagining, you know, that's just to help me locate where I think the, the turn at the bottom of the skull will be. And it also kind of sits just a little bit above that shadow, I think, where it begins to turn. And there's the light of the ear between the dark at the back of the head and the the dark of the back of the head uh, and the ear, could the ears and the light. I forget what I said there, but you know, the ears and the light, and then there's the the dark shape, again, a kind of a jigsaw shape, I suppose you could say. Is that still the ultramarine? It is, yeah, it's a little bit dirty ultramarine, like it. it mm -hmm. and I suppose really I could do with putting some Van Dyke brown into it, but mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't very, very sure and kind of finding my way there, so. I don't want to make it too deep in tone yet. Um, but I'm gradually becoming more confident with the placement. And even just after doing that, I feel like, okay, I can bring a similar, a similar kind of tone in now to where the bone, the cheekbone might sit there, you know, just to kind of help me when I stand back to see. Um, Sometimes when you put the same depth of tone in a few places, it allows you to have uh, that kind of clarity when you stand back then, like well back, 
you can see, okay, is that is that doing what I want it to do? And maybe that there's you know something there too. <clears throat> okay. And there's a vertical drop here, I think. And it feels like it would be helpful, wouldn't it, to put some sort of definition in the mouth. I want to find some kind of a likeness here. And often the mouth is the place to go. Just putting a, a, a touch more shadow there beneath the um, flesh of the nose. But I want it to read as, as kind of nose-ish colour. So I'm putting a bit more lizard and crimson into it there. Uh, there we are in order that it's clear where that shadow stops and the light on the moustache begins. And then below that there's a triangle of mouth shape. It seems to be coming back a little bit further than the, than the bit of the nose here, near the fleshy part of the nostril where it meets the light triangle of skin there. And then below that is um, the shape that represents, well it's still a little bit wet, that, that mouth. I mean that yellow walker business that I used for the so it's not really capturing it, but it's it's kind of all right, at least it's it's made it a little bit more clear what I was aiming for. The line dividing the lips really is what I would like to explain there, or something to explain the dark of the upper lip where it comes to meet um the lower lip. Something like that kind of direction, I think. And I could maybe use that same colour to find the position, to find the position of the nostril there, um, and there's two directions, it begins a bit wet, but there's kind of two directions to the nostril, I think, something like that, just knock it down a small bit, and even subdue it a bit for printing it off again. <coughs> so, yeah, I feel like there's something about only setting things in space clearly once you have a clarity yourself. And the thing that you're aiming to do really with all of the build up beforehand is to be clear in yourself that you can see and explain. You know, it's not that it's not gonna feel like that's possible every time. We're not able to do that every time, thank God, because we'd all be doing the same thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So we need to work it off in our own <laughs> way and find our own kind of let it come through our own mm -hmm. system. And then um it'll be yours alone, kind of your finding marks, your approximation of this. Okay. And it's good. Mm. It's good fun, you know. It is yeah. savouring mm. in the process. Can no, you do too many different colours? Can you do too many? Yeah. I think if you become like distracted by colour mm. and you stop finding what's there. Mm. I think there's like we spoke about this a bit yesterday, Claire, about the the root the place for tone and colour and which mm. one I think at the beginning, tone has more of a weight. Mm. You want to rely more on finding tonally. So mm. if the colour isn't exactly right, but I've seen something that mm. I know would explain mm. the curve of the cheek, mm. I'm going to put the wrong colour on there yeah. mm. so that I can honour the moment of noticing because mm. those moments are gold. Like mm. You want to really yeah. Yeah. Mm. you know, harness that and then do it. Mm. And that's mm. kind of gumption. I'm keeping the faith mm. in something like that. Um, I think maybe a bit of the alliterum comes in after that lovely. So the back of the neck, like if I was to draw a straight line across from the neckline of the jacket, it looks like it would sit just below the lower lip there. Um, and if I were to draw a straight line up from the neck at the back, it only catches the tip of the ear. So I think it might be kind of there. And it's important really to give enough width to these areas. Mm and the height too, so finding it horizontally where it meets the front of the face is important, I think. And once you're happy then with it, you can, you can give it more clarity. Um, now Madeline did set my alarm. I'm kind of delighted to have a bit more time. I'm having fun here this morning. <laughs> I'm not so nervous as yesterday, but the alarm should go off. I'll just check. Just so. Oh yeah, three minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe um, there'd be no harm to just move down. I'm going to get the two inch brush now. So all the time there, I was pretty much using the one and a half inch brush. 
And if you can, like if you've got any sort of comfort with me, oh Jesus. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I've had this brush for so long. Oh. I do actually, yeah, good mother set. This one I got from my friend um, Colin, who's a, he was a stone carver and he died maybe 10, 12 years ago. And his wife gave me all his art materials and that was how I discovered these brushes. I couldn't find, there was no name on it because he had it for years before that. But this is the end of an era, my God. Oh, just to say thanks, Colin. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think quite simply. Okay, so I'll just carry on with the... Can I use someone else's if you've got one? Yeah, Can I use yours, Edward? That's David. Yeah, do, do. Is it yeah. David's? Okay, thanks. It's on your divine brush, isn't it? It is, yeah. That's mm. the series 222. Yeah. yeah, it must be good. <laughs> so that was, that was that one, originally. Mm. They're actually varnishing brushes, you know. <clears throat> right. I was looking up watercolor brushes and I could never find it. And then I saw it advertised somewhere. I thought, that looks like my brush. It was a varnishing brush. Oh. <clears throat> okay, so I just want to extend out the way from the face a little bit. <clears throat> and then put in some burnt sienna into the alizarin crimson there. Because I think that's maybe quite a good colour. And I'm making it a bit more fluid than the other colours. So that, um, although not that much more fluid, that's kind of a good consistency. You might err on the side of fluidity. Judge your painting yesterday and decide, do you want it to feel more fluid? Or does it need to be reined in a little bit and be slightly um, less fluid? Okay, so the, find, the important thing for me here, I think, is the direction there of the... Um, the colour as it comes down but also as soon as I put it in it feels like this needs to be subdued now because I don't want there there isn't a huge transition there, there isn't a huge difference in tone here and I want it to read as though his head is the knife is kind of um, twisting away from us the knife is twisting away from us and there's the um, jacket appearing on the other side I hope that reads as the same colour as the jacket on this side and now I'm going to find where the neck sits back and comes up through the socket of the eye, maybe about there. Something like about there, I think. The jacket on the other side. And I can just pull it down for now, I think. Just want it to be almost, um, well, kind of almost, almost vertical. That was really not quite the... Sometimes, you know, like yesterday, I was saying, when you, make, when you do something and you feel like it's not quite the thing, then you can lose it with your, with your splash. And it kind of makes me feel inspired to see a surface like that around the face. Because I feel like I've been putting my effort into this face and trying to find the bits and pieces. And then having something that's not at all convoluted, mm -hmm. but free. I think they, they work off each other, I think. Mm -hmm. And there's a thing of, um, you can make a, you know, a wild goose tame, but you can't make a tame goose wild. So this thing of bringing in early on some sort of energetic kind of wildness, mm -hmm. then you can then you can kind of hone it as the day goes on. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we if we begin scared, or I mean it's natural to have some nerves, but if we begin kind of tentatively, I think then it's difficult to make a wild goose out of it. Mm -hmm. Someone in Wales said to me that they had a wild goose and they couldn't tame it. <laughs> some, some paintings are like that. But, mm -hmm. You know, most of the time it's worth it. I think it's worth taking the risk and going for the wild approach to begin with. Pete, thanks ever so much. That was great. You're welcome. Yeah, good to have your face back again. <laughs> as much as your personality and all the rest would like, but it's nice to kind of negotiate. I think our faces say so much about us too, don't they? And I really value our models because I feel like they have a way of being that's alert, alive and engaged mm -hmm. without moving. Mm -hmm. And it's such a gift to be in the mm -hmm. presence of somebody mm -hmm. in that way and without talking, mm -hmm. but just attentive. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so thanks, Pete. It's really, it's really great. Now, are you up for doing a bit of a kind of a warm up again? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, because okay, Pete's going to have a break anyway. Mm. David, David, I don't hear an affirmative in your corner. <laughs> <laughs> it did. My Pilates instructor was very impressed last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was he? Oh, really? Yes. He, yeah. Yes. Well, I, I did lots of things. I told him that. It was all about what he'd done. He's, he's a 
So that was very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, did he? Okay. Well, I, I had a look at my sister's Tai I, I got permission from my sister to do what she does, her Tai Chi moves, mm -hmm. and I tried them out this morning and wrote a few notes. Mm -hmm. So I think I've got 10 minutes of the routine for us now. Good. And Pete, you're welcome to join us if you want to. And thanks, everybody. Oh. Sorry, I kept that.